Good morning. Welcome to My Left Ear. I'm Carrie Freeman. It's November 12th, 1920. 1920, did I say that? I'm not going to re record. 2020. I've got election hangover. Maybe you do also. So forgive me if uh, I make any gaffes today. I think I'm a little um, sleep deprived. So at any rate, this is a Biden-Harris site. All opinions and predictions are my own. And thank you for any subscriptions, hitting that button. What I like to say is, wouldn't it be nice if you hit subscribe? All right, I am the writer, producer, director of My Left Ear. Sometimes I call it MLE. And it's called that because I get information through my left ear not audio, but I get words, I get sentences, I'm told things in that way. And what I do is I do psychic coaching. Uh, I do therapeutic hypnosis, which I've been doing for 20 years. I am a writing coach and an acting coach because I have a background in both. I'm in the Screen Actors Guild and I've written a couple of books. So I help people. Now, I wrote something today, or I thought of something today, and it's about uh, readings. Because I know if someone is watching me, they're definitely watching other people who do similar things, as I do. And I wanna say, back in the day when I used to get a number of readings, I had a, a plan, I had a technique, which is I would usually get two, sometimes three, but usually two, so I could compare the information. If I got similar information, bingo, I was in the correct lane. So what I've noticed is that there's some really good readers online, tarot readers, psychics, clairvoyants. I don't watch a lot of people, but I watch a few, and some of them you know who, but I have to uh, watch them after I do my own readings because what I've noticed is we're often aligned, all of us, and we say things in different ways, different tones, different styles, deliveries. So I, you know, so this is called when predictions align, you can sort of pay attention, you're getting good information. Uh, so we're aligning, we're not co-opting each other, we're really having all similar impressions. All right, on to Joe Biden. I'm gonna start with Joe Biden today. Here's what I've noticed. And I have predictions in the middle of all this. I have my point of view. But Joe Biden remains calm. And it's just a beautiful thing. And he's, he, you know, the other day when he, when he made a, a speech, and it was when his transition, his transition is being held up. I'll get to that. Uh, he's not getting intel. So all of these things are happening, but he was calm. He got up in front of us and he just said, we're proceeding, blah, blah, blah. So we should follow his lead because I also wanna suggest that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris know things we don't know. They have some insider information that we don't know. But I'm following their lead and my left ear is following their lead. And this is only going in one direction, one direction, and that happens on January 20th, 2021. Joe has his eye on the issues. He's addressing the issues. He's into solutions right now. And I think he's so smart for just not trying to antagonize. He's just moving forward calmly. And in fact, that is probably very irritating to Donald Trump, that Biden doesn't want to fight. He's just moving forward. And in fact, in terms of moving forward, he's gotten phone calls of congratulations from uh, world leaders, Angela Merkel from Germany, Macron from Paris, Trudeau, Trudeau from Canada, Boris J from the UK, who just said this really funny thing. Um, he called Trump the previous president. He didn't even call him by his name, the previous president. And Netanyahu from Israel and the Saudi king called Donald Trump. I don't care about the Saudi king. 
So as you know, Joe Biden has been denied intel information by the Trump administration. He is due that as the president elect, but he's not getting it. And this is very, very serious because it's about world affairs. It's about our safety. This transition is very delicate. I don't have to tell you, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir. But what I've noticed is little by little, little by little, even today, some GOP senators are coming out to demand that Joe Biden receive this intel. Even they recognize it's vital. So Senators Langford, Grassley, Susan Collins, surprisingly, and Governor Mike DeWine from Ohio have all come out and said, you must include Biden with the intel. Uh, Karl Rove from the George Bush campaign said, it's over. He went on Fox News and mega donor Sheldon Adelson from Las Vegas said, give it up, give it up. And he's given Trump like $75 million and more. George Bush, ex-president, wrote a letter, said that there is no evidence of cheating and stated that Joe Biden got 5 million more votes. So George Bush now supporting Joe Biden. And Rupert Murdoch claims it's over. In fact, Rupert Murdoch predicted this. I expect more GOP to come forward every single day. They're getting exhausted. Uh, it's gonna affect their campaigns in two years. They want this over, they're tired of it. It's very clear who's won this election. So now we have, uh, oh, and here's a quote, and I have to apologize because I didn't write down who said it, but it was someone very important. Trust me on that. Uh, the quote is, once Biden starts getting his briefings and begins having conversations with world leaders based on the intel, there will be no going back. There will be no going back. Now we've got this little girl, I call her GSA Emily, because she's in charge of the GSA administration and she is the one person who is supposed to sign the transition papers, releasing big money and entree to offices and organization and equipment for President-elect Joe Biden, and she won't do it. My left ear says this young woman has been threatened and she's too young and too inexperienced to know what to do. What she should have done was sign the papers and cut bait. She probably would have get, gotten re, uh, re, uh, rewarded for it, but she's not doing it. And you know what? Biden administration is, pro is moving ahead anyway. And I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but it's gonna turn out, that I know. Like I said, this is going in one direction uh, and not the group. So now on to Donald Trump, our soon to be ex-president. We know he's an extreme narcissist, malignant narcissist. Uh, he's been called a sociopath, psychopath, and I'm on board for all of that. <clears throat> But there's something about narcissism. If a woman is dating a narcissist, and I suppose it could be opposite, but we see this more not more than not with women dating a narcissist. And if she breaks up with him, this becomes the most dangerous part of their relationship. This is when he could uh, stalk her, do damage, be violent. And this is when a lot of people get murdered in love relationships, when there's a breakup with a narcissist. They can't handle it. So we know this is true of Donald Trump. So it's as if we broke up with Donald Trump and he's the boyfriend who's now dangerous. Just needed to get that out there because it's a good, it's a good metaphor. So what I wanna say about his future, because a lot of people are coming out and going, well, he's gonna run in 2024 and he's gonna do this and he's gonna start a network and Barry Fox and I want to say, no, he's not. My left ear says, no, he's not. He really doesn't have a chapter two. He's not going to run in 2024. Trump has a neurological condition and he's in physical decline. Once again, go listen to Tom Joseph's podcast. And Tom is on Twitter. Now, when Trump no longer has something called source supply, which all narcissists 
require. That is a lot of attention, compliments, love, waves of love. He'll deflate. He'll deflate. It will be such a shock to his system because he got addicted to power and he got addicted to tremendous amounts of attention. He might have a few rallies. I wonder how many people will show up, uh, but there's no more ultimate power shortly in a few months. So he's going to lose also his perceived friends. He thinks he has friends. He thinks he does, but he really doesn't. When he's not useful, they're going to go. He's going to look around and go, why aren't they returning my, what's going on? So there you go. Uh, his life, Trump's life, is going to be filled with nonstop depositions and massive legal bills. And he will not create a network. He'll badmouth Fox, but he won't be able to do anything about it. And I'm going to refer to Michael Cohn, who I think, uh, you know, has really reinvented himself uh, for the most part and is pretty decent now. I think he learned some very painful, painful lessons. I don't know why it was so late, but he's back. He's here. And Michael Cohn says once he goes to Mara Fargo, which is what I call it, uh, after the electoral call on December 8th, he won't return. Now here's the thing, Michael Cohn thinks he won't return after Christmas. I think if he goes away after December 8th, he won't come back. If he goes to Mar-a-Lago to play golf or for a long weekend, he won't come back. He is a TV guy, he likes optics. And uh, he's not gonna want video of him leaving the White House and getting on a helicopter as the loser, no way. So he is gonna find a way to get out of there. No helicopter shot, no nice waving goodbye as he flies into the sunset. Now we're off to about the Georgia runoff Senate race. Huge, huge, huge. This is gonna, should be all our focus. I'm sending money to uh, John Ossoff and Reverend Warnock. I think it's that important. By the way, I'm bringing up Mitch because he's the Senate Majority Leader right now. But I know that Mitch cheated. So I'm taking a little detour here. And one of the reasons is, when I was watching the debate between Mitch and Amy McGrath, and Mitch started laughing, and she was talking about COVID, the deaths, and the need for stimulus, and people suffering, he was laughing and smirking at her. And I sat on my sofa and I thought, he's got this thing sewn up because if he really thought he needed to win this race, he wouldn't be doing this. He wouldn't be doing this. And of course, he allegedly won with 14% approval rating in Kentucky. So I think they're gonna investigate Mitch. I think they're gonna investigate the counts in Kentucky. So hold on, there might be a surprise there. Now, my left ear tells me that both John Ossoff and Reverend Warnock will both win. And I, I made a $5 bet with um, a good friend of mine this morning who is also very psychic, and she doesn't think so. She thinks, um, the Reverend will win, but not John Ossoff. And she doesn't think the Dems will take the Senate. So I said, okay, let you, you know, we're both psychic. Let's just make a $5 bet. So we've got a $5 bet going. Uh, I mentioned this last time that Kelly Loeffler, and then I found out that Purdue, the GOP senators from Georgia, they sold stocks uh, right after coming out of a COVID meeting earlier in the year and they made a fortune. So may we call this insider trading? I think we can. And that's not gonna be investigated in 2020, not with, not with Bill Barr, but I think there's a really good chance they could be investigated in 2020. One, and that could come up to what I say, bite them on the butt. So they also, these two in Georgia, just called for the resignation 
of, I think it's the Secretary of State, and I apologize, I should have done better research, but it makes them look very bad, and it's a GOP thing. So, not good. We have uh, an incredible uh, patriot, powerful woman in Stacey Abrams, and she's gonna be, this is her whole focus now, Stacey's whole focus, and she just gets more and more powerful and does better and better work. Biden will go to Georgia. He's going to discuss his plans for the stimulus, for extended unemployment, for helping people, which their people aren't talking about. The GOP aren't talking about. We're just like we're on the Mojave Desert, just crawling towards a drink of water. And Joe is standing there and saying, come here, children. I have some nice cool water for you. So Biden's going to make a difference in Georgia. What I wanna urge everybody to do is continue using, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if John Ossoff and Reverend Warnock both win Georgia Senate seats? Wouldn't it be nice if the Democrats took over the Senate? So just keep that up. Now I've been so kind of overwhelmed and processing the election that I'm sure I left something out of this video, but I think it's better to do shorter videos than longer videos and not bore people. So we're at the quotes section. This quote reminded me very much of Joe Biden when he spoke so calmly the other day about this transition. So this quote says, calmness is the cradle of power. Calmness is the cradle of power. And we felt Joe Biden's power the other day in his calmness. And this quote is by someone I've never heard before, Hosiah Gilbert Holland. And he lived from 1819 to 1881. He was an American novelist and poet. And I just learned about him myself today. And here's the second quote, which reminds me of Donald Trump. It's by famous irreverent author, Charles Bukowski. Outrageous man, Charles Bukowski. And he wrote, I don't hate people. I just feel better when they're not around. So I rewrote it for today. I don't hate Trump. I just feel better when he's not around, right? I'm trying to keep hate out of it, although I have very, very passionate feelings. I want you to know that. I just try not to use the word because I know it's not, it's not a good word to use. And then one more, just for fun. It's by the poet Emerson. He wrote, common sense is genius dressed in working clothes. I happen to love common sense. I happen to appreciate common sense. I've met quite a few people who don't have it and you can't get it, you can't learn it. Either somehow you, you're born with it or you get it at a very young age. And it's, a, it's sort of fascinating. I will be back. I hope this was fun. We'll see what's coming up. And as I always say, make peace, make memories. Now I'm gonna see if my clicker works. Let's see, let's see, will it do it? Off, nope. All right, that clicker didn't work.